Vienna, uh, one of the people in the audience came up to me and said, I have that same story, but from the other point of view, she's a Swedish woman who went to the United States and entered the sauna and took off all her clothes. <laughs> 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 and the other people who were in the sauna went running out. <laughs> We have a lot of material to cover today, and we will not get to all of it. So what I've done is uploaded this presentation to the Falco website and also to my website. <coughs> you have my website information on the handout. So if any of this interests you, or if there's any area that we don't get to today, please visit the website. Download it for yourself, and it's a, I don't know, it's a 22 page booklet. And you can use it for yourself or your club or whatever. Okay? I guess the first thing that we want to talk about is why write? What's the reason to write? I can tell you for me, writing is my nourishment. It provides nourishment for everything I do in my life. I'm able to get through my day because I know that I'm always in the act of making something, of creating something. And that's a really great feeling for me. Um, some of you might have experienced that, not just as a writer, but in other creative endeavors in your life, whether it's cooking or baking or playing the piano or painting or reading even. Uh, to me, reading is an act of, of creating as well. So that's my reason for doing it, but <coughs> I have some other reasons here too. The first one is you have a need to write. You have this, this burning desire to get your thoughts down on paper. Maybe it's because you're uh, my age and the thoughts escape your brain a little more quickly than you might hope. Um, maybe it's because you have something to say and you want to share it with others. But if you have a burning need to write, that's a very good reason to do it. Uh, another reason to write, you miss your own language. I always wrote song lyrics. Um, I think when I started doing that when I was about 12 years old. But in terms of writing prose, I really didn't start doing that <coughs> until I moved to Germany. And now I have a career as a writer, so turning into an expat, I think really kicked my butt and got me going. But I was a stay-at-home mom at that point. I had a two-year-old son. Uh, yeah, was my only chance to speak English was with him. And the rest of the time I was struggling with German. And I, I, I missed my language. So that was a way for me to stay in touch with it. And I've discovered that other people, other expats, have that same experience. Maybe you want your children and someday your grandchildren to know about your crazy life. That's also a really great reason to sit down and write the things. You know, we don't all have to be best-selling authors. Maybe we just want to leave something to the next generation. So that they, especially if they're, if they're children and grandchildren who will be growing up not in America, but in another country. And it's nice for them to be able to have a record of what it is that you experience. It will be appreciated. <coughs> Emotional writing. You're funny, you're serious, you're sad, you're lonely, or maybe you're mad. But you have something to say about those emotions. Sit down, get it on paper, or on the computer screen. Maybe your life is interesting, or not so interesting, and you want to share those experiences. Maybe you want to write about then your life before you moved to now. My books are, uh, and my stories are full of then and now. <coughs> and the comparison between those two things is often uh, worth writing and worth reading. Your club has a newsletter or a bulletin or a website <coughs> and they need a writer. This is another really good reason to write. 
If it's something that you're comfortable doing, you can really do your club a great service by sitting down and writing about club activities or interesting women in your club and publishing that information in whatever newsletter they happen to have. Your friends and family back at home want to learn about your life. You know, that was a big thing for me. We moved to Germany in 1994 and I started writing emails um, to my family. And they said, keep them coming. You know, back in 94, to make a phone call was ridiculously expensive. From <coughs> so maybe they want to learn about your life. Or on the other side, maybe you want them to learn about your life. That's another thing, you know. You want, you want them to know what it is that you're experiencing or your friends. No one else is writing about you, so you might as well do it yourself. <laughs> You have a fantastic story or an idea for a novel and you can't stop thinking about it. That's what happened to me um, with my second book with Rhythm. I got this story in my head and it took over. I was obsessed with it. That's a really good reason to sit down and write. You know a person in your club or somewhere in your life who deserves to have an article written about her or him. That's a good reason to write. Maybe you'll make some money. Or maybe you won't. <laughs> and, here's a very good one. You feel powerful when you express yourself with writing. I think for many of us, standing up and speaking publicly is not a great thing. It's not a comfortable thing. But I, you can do it on paper and that makes you feel powerful. So we have, I know, how many writers do we have in this room? People who consider themselves writers. Lori Richardson, raise your hand. Today? Um, yeah, I'd like us to hear quickly, why, Clarice, why do you write? You don't know? <laughs> no, I don't. How does it make you feel when you write? I don't know, I'm compulsive. I write on newspaper, I'll write on anything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Becky. <coughs> I actually started writing for our newsletter, just like you were saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Peggy said this morning, we could send in the box of forms because mm -hmm. I'd written all these articles about Todd when I was there. But now that we've got the still reading group, we've got 1,000 reviews online, and I've written more than anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been doing it for 17 years, so I consider myself a filmmaker. You don't even know what nobody else does. <laughs> idea of a writing success story because she, she had a passion for film and she started writing about it and through the course of doing this she's turned into a very good writer. So yeah. <laughs> Tracy, why do you write? Well basically like what you said about the last and makes me so powerful. Mm -hmm. I like to see what I can do magic I can create some words. I like to surprise myself mm -hmm. and I like to inspire. And you do. Thank you. Tracy has a great blog, which we'll be talking about later. Who else? Who else is a writer? Okay, I'm ready. What? Because I'm unusual because I perform. Okay. So I'm a performance poet more than I am a, I say, a writer. Mm -hmm. So I actually stand up in front of people. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have that in common. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you write your own material. I definitely write my own material. Yeah. Okay. That's a great reason to write. Okay. Who else? Margaret. I'm a success writer. Okay. Um, I used to write stories and novels before I moved to Germany. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started writing for a long time, I think a long time. Um, and then I started doing um, festival mm -hmm. writing, you know, uh, things uh, that have a purpose for other people, like Baco things about past events. Technical writing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like technical mm -hmm. writing, journalistic writing, sort of like <coughs> part of my training. Mm -hmm. um, I got mixed up with the German language and had like mixed up sentences with all of the German and English and then um, had a lot of fear about just is it going to still work in English. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the half written started projects, uh, plays, and 
uh, things that are still sitting in the laptop haven't been completed because then I 